than two years ago, we came right here to Ballon in County Carlow to meet a very special young man called Ethan Glynn. And he had a condition called congenital sued arthrosis. And he had to make the decision whether or not to have his leg amputated. Two years later, let's see how he's doing. It is two years since we descended upon your house and you were not shipped off to your granny's. Yep, not a clue what was happening. What was it like when you arrived up? I remember you were coming up the drive and I you was, just looked around. I was absolutely speechless. And what was your memory of the day? Like all the stuff that you got up to? Uh, lots of pizza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the gaming van, which I thought was very good. Yeah, we had a struggle to get that yeah. out, didn't we? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good times. Yeah. And two years ago, since we sat on this very stairs, and you are now... 11. 11, yeah. Uh, okay, and you're in sixth class? Sixth class, last year of primary school now. How do you feel about secondary? Mm, looking forward to it. Yeah. A bit. Good. And what else has changed in your world? What are you into now? Uh, Pretty much the same things, games, YouTube, that kind of thing. And I know you're only 11, but have you thought about what you want to do when you're older, or has that come into your head at all? You... Not really. No. no. Paralympian. Paralympian, eh? Yeah. Come here. The last time we were here, we had a chat with you about how brave and how amazing and incredible you were and I wasn't the only one that said that, everybody that was here that day said it but also the uh, people that watched your video and, and heard your incredible story. And tell me what has changed since that video? Um, well, number one, which is the most obvious, I've gotten a lot taller and I have... <laughs> yeah, you have. <laughs> and I've gotten a new prosthetic leg. Yeah. The grand unveiling shall now commence. Let's do it. I have every Star Wars, oh my the God. cover of every Star Wars episode on my leg. Did you did you design this yourself? Uh, well, I picked. Yeah, I picked. I got to pick what was designed on it, and then the people that uh, are up at Autobach then printed the design onto the leg. So yeah, I think it looks really cool. Uh, it looks really really cool. Like, that's so impressive. For you, as Ethan's mum, describe to me what it was like in the hospital that day that you, you went up. It was just, uh, were we doing the right thing? That's all I could think. Is this the right thing? Is this the best thing for Ethan? Are we sure? Like, we had researched everything. We knew in our heads it was the best thing. But I think it was more our heart that was saying, are we sure? Are we sure? Are we sure? Like, is he going to say to us in a few years' time, why did you do that? I regret it. But doing the research, we knew it was the right thing. Yeah. But like knowing what was gonna happen, it was just so hard. There's nothing stops him now. He joins in with absolutely everything. I'm, I'm blessed with him. He's never looked back. He's never said, why me? He's never been sad about it. He's got his leg and he's just like everybody else. I just think you're amazing. I really, really do. I think I've never met anybody like you as strong and as determined. Um, thanks for letting me back into your house. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> We met Katie Murphy from Wexford. She was nominated by her lovely friend Lisa for being an absolute super mom, super wife, and all around amazing person. She is mom to Brax, Charlie, and her son Joe, who is severely autistic. And it is time to find out how their year has been. Hello! a year ago since we landed on your doorstep and I'll never forget because yeah. I didn't know what was going on. I was at the front door but when I saw the video of you in the kitchen, hands and knees, yeah. you you really were floored, weren't you? Literally you took to the floor. Yeah, completely. Um, like I said, I was waiting for this announcement that pink tickets were going on sale <laughs> and all of a sudden my friend Lisa's voice comes on the radio um, and then she starts saying really nice things so that made me cry and then the announcement came you need to go to your front door 
Uh, so yeah, I, that was the point that I thought my legs are not going <laughs> to hold me any longer. What the hell is at that door? And um, yeah, and then I opened it and you were there. <laughs> yeah, we don't have enough opportunities to tell people how we really feel about them and how amazing we think they are. So this time last year you were head in the books and you were getting down to like the final stages. You've got good news. I do. Um, I have my masters. Uh, everything's been passed, and I have my two one. So better you than got expected. You got two one. That is amazing. Like yeah. you stayed up late nights. You put in so much work. Yeah, it was like one and two in the morning for the majority of the two years. So you were determined to do it, though, weren't you? Yeah. One of the things, and the probably the most important thing that resonated with people last year was your story and and Joe and. Um, that moment when you read out the poem that he had written, I think, was just one of the most special moments and the thing that kind of made people sit up and realise, God, mm -hmm. I'm not on my own. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in, in the, same the same situation and maybe not realising that their communication is possible. Like yes. Joe has proved that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and since then, he has just gone from strength to strength. Uh, he still has difficulties in using the stencils in an RPM, it's very challenging, but um, yeah, I think perseverance and consistency and belief as well. The one thing that we Here he is, on is cue. Always assume competence. <laughs> okay, so this is Joey's poem for anybody who didn't hear it, or just to remind those that did, and it's called Rocky Run. And he wrote, uh, running and jumping every day, isn't that hard work? Yes, people don't understand, I don't talk. Just see because they never run. Run myself wild night after night, ever talking and ever silent, ever lonely by myself. Soar together, hi everybody. Nice friends are dancing in sight, ever pairs a fight. It's severe, they sat still together, I can't manage that. Lonely I am, dad. On look really nice children, don't they look nice playing ma'am? A dash of rain, some balloons in the sky, noise is too loud, children cry. him what he would like to be when he grows up and he said a writer. Is that what you want to be? Mm. Yeah. You'd like to be a writer wouldn't yeah. you? And you can be. <laughs> yes you can. <laughs> yeah. You can write your own book. So if you were to sum up your Feel Good Friday experience how would you uh, describe it? How would I describe <laughs> it? Um, amazing, overwhelming, unexpected, um, just completely grateful. Uh, Again, to, the, to Lisa who nominated me, to hearing the lovely things that my mom and Derek has said, um, and it just shows how much support and love there is as it is in my life, and obviously uh, to beat as well for being so kind uh, and arranging for these things as well. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so live on Beat Breakfast three years ago, you were surprised, literally the shock of your life. Take me back to that morning, what was going through your head? They brought you in under complete false pretenses. Yes, so the day before was a Thursday and I had skipped out of Whitfield. It was my last uh, radiotherapy session for the breast cancer, so I was happy out. I was delighted with myself. So um, I'd left there, came into work and had worked all day and then um, I'd gone to bed early that night because I was supposed to be going and be breakfast the following morning just to talk about Fairy Tale Friday which had happened the Friday before where a few of us dressed up as fairy tale characters. You'll never do anything if they ask you again, won't you not? You'll never. Never. Like... But um, yeah, so I had gone in um, under that false pretense of talking about Fairy Tale Friday and I was talking about a couple of kids that I had met in mm. the hospital and they were brilliant and they were so brave and then Niall sprang it on me that we weren't here to talk about that at all. They were actually here to talk about me and they played a videotape of my partner Brian. He had been in to the studio during the week talking um, about the whole breast cancer journey. That, just want to tell her that uh, I love her very much and that I uh, appreciate the, the, all the stuff she does for myself and Billy. 
I couldn't, I couldn't even speak a word. I was in shock. If you look back at the video, I think I just stood there with my mouth open and nothing coming out, which is an unusual occurrence for me. And also because you'd had such good news the day before that you were, you know, you were finished your radiotherapy and that you were kind of out the other side. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you still had worries and concerns, but this must have been like a nice lift. It was, absolutely, because I thought the day before I couldn't get any happier and then yeah. this started. And it just, they just kept revealing more and more. There was flowers. They told me I was going to be met with a limo. We were driving up to the Lyrath Hotel. There was going to be a massage, a hair appointment, which I badly needed at the time. <laughs> we were going to be booked in for dinner. We were staying the night in the Lyrath. It just kept coming and coming. So tell me, at that stage you had Billy. What age was Billy? So Billy was one and a half. Okay, he was one and a half. And there is very, very good news because there's a little lady in your life. Here yes, as well. so a year ago I had finished radiotherapy on the 10th of November, yeah. and now my little girl was born on the 10th of November last year. Oh. So I think November is now my favourite month. Oh. And even with Feel Good Friday, I think it's my favourite time of the year apart from Christmas. And what are your kind of hopes for the future now? Because you've got Billy and you've got Abigail and you've got your lovely Brian. Yeah. So what, what's, what does the future hold for us? Um, lots of fun. I think our house is l like twice as much fun now since Abigail came yeah. on because Billy has a little friend or a little comrade as my dad um, calls it. Um, I'm happy out. I'm still going for my checkups. I'm back in on Monday, Monday in the breast clinic, so they're keeping an eye on me still, and doing all my yearly checks. So we may get married in the future. Yes. Have we got engaged? <laughs> Brian. Yeah. I think because of what you've just said, and for loads of other reasons, you are an inspiration to everybody in this building, and I hope you know that. <laughs> you are. I don't know about that. You are. You really, really are. Um, everybody has just been in awe of how you've coped, honestly. Um, so you're an inspiration to us and to all of those people that watched the video a few years ago. So thanks for sharing your story with us. No problem. Sure. <laughs> so now it's time to shine the spotlight on some more deserving people in the southeast. If there's someone special in your life who you'd like to nominate, we'd love to hear your story.